we have a beautiful presence of none other than the one and only Manisha Koyalala ji. Firstly, thank you very much, ma'am, for joining us. I'm going to invite you to please come on the stage and joining her, may I also invite Preeti Chaturvedi, who's the AVP Marketing and Publicity with Penguin Random House India. I'd also like to invite Jaswan Singh, who's the Managing Director of Comexposium India, to please come on the stage. In fact, Manisha Koirala has recently launched her book titled Healed. And this is where she'll also talk about how brands can be important agents of social heal healing in a consumption-centric world. So first up, I'm going to be requesting three of you to please unveil the book for all of us. That's very carefully unwrapping it so beautifully there. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a huge round of applause as we have three of our guests here unveiling the book Healed by Manisha Koirala. In fact, as you can notice, the books are also being distributed across on the tables. So towards the end of this session, we'll have a special book signing uh, session as well by Manisha Koirala herself. So on that note, let's get the session started. I'm going to be requesting Preeti Chaturvedi to take it forward from here. Over to you, ma'am. Hello. Namaskar. It's great to be here. Thank you for inviting me. OK. So after a very tough battle, which lasted for almost two years with uh, stage four ovarian cancer. Manisha is back with a bang. We've seen the movies. <laughs> so earlier this year, we released her cancer memoir, Healed, which went on to become a bestseller for Penguin India. Uh, and as if all of this was not enough, She's just back from her Everest base camp training. Mm -hmm. And uh, Manisha, <laughs> okay, I'd just like to ask you, big question, how have the last three decades been? Yeah, it's been almost uh, three decades that I have uh, been in films, 28, 27, 28 years to be precise. And uh, it's been a huge, uh, roller cost coaster ride. Like when I started my career, it was um, with Sodagar. Mm. And uh, again, you know, this school girl getting so much of attention and popularity and getting into this big bad world of cinema and, you know, all that. So I think first few years of my getting into the movies, I didn't even know what had hit me. And then slowly I started sinking in, but then I was very young. And uh, at the beginning of my career, I think I got to work with the best directors um, in great films and great filmmakers and amazing, talented co-stars. And uh, so, and then afterwards I feel slowly, and as they say, the, um, in life, whatever goes up has to go down. And uh, I mean, we know that about every aspect of our life, you know, whatever goes up has to, you know, kind of come down as well. Um, in that uh, phase, um, again, was quite prominent for me, quite important for me. And uh, I was choosing wrong films and, you know, it was kind of a spiral downwards journey. and. Uh, the last thing I knew was I was down with uh, stage four ovarian cancer. Uh, my ma marriage had uh, fallen apart and uh, um, everything uh, which earlier was great, like when I would touch it would turn into gold, suddenly everything was gone. Mm. And um, uh, I didn't know how to... So this book of mine uh, healed is actually uh, 
encompassing or trying to fathom, trying to understand, put it in a box, put it in a book, what all that happened and how to get back what I had lost, how to get back my health, how to get back the career which uh, was almost gone, how to get back uh, a strong friendship or relationship or what are the things. So basically, the culmination of, um, though the book talks a lot about my cancer journey, uh, but I think it also is uh, like a metaphor for me to get not only the health which was important, but also getting everything, my life on back on track. Mm. So this is what I actually have mentioned in the book and uh, mm. my life has been, you know, in three decades that I talk about is first decade was that whole euphoria moment where I enter uh, as a nobody and make it into big and then middle decade where all wrong choices happens and you know, um, you know how things start slipping away from you. And then I get into cancer zone and where after that, you know, how I bring back my health, how much I have to struggle to get my health back, you know, what all I have to study, what all I have to make changes in my life, what all, everywhere. Uh, so, Last few years, since 2012, 2013, my treatment got over. After that, onwards have been only about my health. And once I was more confident about that, okay, my health is stably good, it's stable, then I started venturing into workspace. And how in workspace also, probably that's another book if I have to write, is that uh, how uh, something which I lost completely, how I had to struggle to get back. Mm. And now I feel, you know, I am finally getting the opportunities. Mm. And lucky for me, the, now the Indian cinema space has changed where they are accepting middle-aged yeah. women, where, you know, 40 plus women are no more just only into mother's and sister's bracket. There's mm. more challenges and challenging roles, uh, even if they're playing mother or sister, but they are, it's far more uh, interesting to play those characters. So um, my health is back on track. My work is back on track, or slowly getting back on track. Mm. Um, so last bit of my journey has been pretty good. That's fantastic. There's a... There's I read this somewhere that character is formed in crisis, right? And you've been through a big one. If you were to summarize for all of us here, what have been your top learnings and takeaways, you know, during this period of struggle, then what would it be? Well, I actually, in depth of people, I would request uh, you all to read my book. And uh, last couple of chapter deals with that and uh, how I have taken cancer as a metaphor and tried to look at things. Like I, I earlier on had a very victim mentality. In, in fact, I felt if things would go wrong, I would blame on to others. But cancer is something which actually taught me how to actually look into my own self and say if I have cancer, rather than saying why me, I should say, okay, I got this now, what do I do next? What is the next best step forward, you know, in a dire consequences? So, I mean, there's a lot in the book, so please read the book. But um, I think for me, the learning takeaway has been that uh, during cancer time, uh, I realized how important health was. And we normally take it for granted. We always, you know, put the health at the last job. When we reach hospital, then we realize the value of our health. And I'm just requesting that why not take care of your health much before you, that you don't probably need to go to the hospital. Or, or even if you go to the hospital, you come out really quickly. So it's like there are, I mean, you just need to be focused about prioritizing health and, you know, which I did. I realized the value of health how to be mindful, mindful living, you know, to, and if I need to dissect that, uh, it would be what food are we eating? What quality of food are we taking? What are we giving it to this body? 
and how much sleep are we getting? What is our stress uh, level? Are we putting our minds into stress or not? Normally, people who are into family or into work, uh, they don't care about their stress. And they'll, at the most, they'll probably pop a pill to recover and move on. And I think that's a wrong way of dealing with it. We kind of need to be gentle with ourselves. And food, nutrition, sleep, uh, recreational activities, you know, uh, joyful things. And, you know, in Harvard or some one of the uh, universities, there's a study that people who live longest are the most happy and they have a long community sense, mm. the sense of community. Uh, of uh, binding together of family unity and stuff like that. And um, all these things are really essential. Now I'm going to talk about a little bit about the family as well, because for me, um, it was an eye opener. Like uh, before cancer, I had zillions of friends. And I used to party in London and Ibiza and you know, you name it, uh, New York. And I was, you know, a person who loved going out and making friends and partying and all that. And when cancer struck me, imagine how many people was there behind, beside my bed. None. So I realized I had actually not cultivated good friendship, good bonds. It's okay to have frivolous time. It's okay to be relaxed and party. I'm not saying that, but uh, be mindful about what quality of friendship are we developing, I guess. And oh, to me, at the end of the day, who was standing beside me in those grave moments were my family. And, and uh, so I really put them on number one bracket and, uh, and few handful of friends. And that's enough for me right now to sustain my life rather than having the whole janta, the whole you know, crowd uh, and thinking that I'm very popular and I'm very loved. It's, it's a delusion. <laughs> there are very few people who actually stand by you there are very few family members who actually stand by you in time of uh, trouble. And we need to be able to be intelligent enough to know who are those people and value that friendship and make that even stronger and more beautiful and more deeper. So relationship, health, um, and basically, you know, I feel uh, to me what was the biggest, biggest gift cancer gave me was... Uh, uh, realizing that uh, I'm a, just a mortal being. Yeah. You know, we see death, uh, you know, people have, you know, we see death on the other side, but we never actually imagined that it can happen to me. Mm -hmm. I never imagined that. Mm -hmm. But when I was sitting with uncertainty of whether I was going to live or die, I, I faced my death and I realized, my God, you know, I am, I'm going to go. And so when I started looking back and I said, oh, what did I do when I was confident that I have living? It's just a complacent attitude when we realize that life is ongoing process. It's not. Our time is limited. And we must make the best use of that time. We must be clear what really is important to us. So, um, to me, that realization was the biggest gift cancer gave me. Mm -hmm. So I make the most of what I have today, rather than worrying of what I don't have and what I could have and, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm more content, more happy, more joyful, more humble, more um, uh, grateful Lovely. I am. Yeah. Our panel is basically on the subject of driving a positive change. And um, there are a lot of brands that are part of this conference here. Is there any message that you'd like to convey to them in terms of how they can come forward and support, you know? Thank you for asking that question. I actually was going to bring um, a brochure which I totally forgot. Um, I feel a part of my life also is giving back to the society which has given me a lot. Remember we were talking about uh, there was in the incident in the book. There is one incident where I, uh, s when I get encouraged by a stranger, and when he gives me a thumbs up, and I realize, you know, I used to be extremely conscious of uh, my bald head and looking ugly, and I used to. Uh, I discovered during my morning walks that the world is not so, not such a bad place 
the people who actually care for you and they are they are empathetic towards your pain and are actually encouraging you so i realized so much of love i have received during that time and one of the promises i made to myself was if i become well i will give back uh, in terms of whatever i can to the love that i was actually receiving through my fans through my well wishers through strangers um so i feel it's one of the thing which motivates me now to carry forward or give forward or just you know um just kindness and being present um so i choose uh wherever thing which is dear to me like for me cancer ngos the organizations which are doing good work for the poor cancer patient where i could probably they probably the poor patient don't have enough means to get a treatment um uh, last week i was at the tata memorial in bombay in hospital where i was sitting with the head of children's department dr girish and uh, so when i got to hear about one case where a couple where the mother the wife is pregnant they already have three daughters one of the daughter eldest daughter who is 8 year old um has cancer so the father got the uh, the child after doing some uh, train journey of couple of hours i think 8 hours from some village and uh, he just wanted to leave the daughter and go back and tend to his two other daughters and wife who is pregnant and he doesn't have enough means to be present for her daughter his daughter so what he was telling the doctors were that you look after her i have to look after my three other people who are living and i can't you know so this child doesn't have any support so like this there's a zillion cases and um, i my heart just broke and i said can we do something for people who are like um, sorry i had to put in an alarm but there are many many situ- uh, places where we can really contribute and uh, it's precious you know i mean your small little help will probably make a huge difference to somebody's life um many a times you know uh, we don't do that effort ki unke paas kafi paisa hai tata hai government hospital hai to kafi paisa hai you know i mean government deti rehti hai so why do we bother it's not that they they are dealing of course the government is doing of course the doctors are doing of course the ngos are doing but there's still lot more if you actually have the time and listen to their story your heart will melt for sure you know there's lot more uh, help which is needed so please find whatever uh, whatever near to you uh, you know you never know whose life you are touching and whose life you are impacting in a better way you never know that and that person will be grateful forever so um well lovely okay and uh, as an end note um, any projects that the audience here should be excited for <laughs> <laughs> yeah this year has been pretty good for me actually my um movies are coming up so i think sanju released and uh, there is just yesterday we announced on uh, twitter and insta in a social platform my netflix film which is going to be releasing and uh, there are a couple of interesting project i've just um, this year was good because i think uh, we released our book and it is the best seller and also uh, me and my school friends got together and we went to every space camp and we decided that every year one is a housewife one is a uh, is a professor one is a fashion designer and you know business person so we all are in a different me from bollywood so we all have come together and um, this year in april we went to every space camp um, and next year we are hoping some other lovely uh, this thing we will go to so exploring nature exploring and being together with friends and bonding those 12 15 days uh, fantastic yeah fantastic uh we were planning for some audience q and a but uh, we're short of time right now so but if there are few questions i can yeah. take is it okay like yes yes absolutely okay. 
We're going to open the floor for questions, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to request you to raise your hands and please introduce yourself before directing the question. And let's make this quick. Any questions? Okay, we'll start with Mr. Sundar. Yes, sir. So, um, hi, Manisha. I'm easily one of your best fans. <laughs> <coughs> so, there was a song, Ek Ladki Ko Dekha To Kaisa Laga. So, I saw you at the reception. Bilkul Vaisa Hi Laga. As an engineering student at that time, uh, my heart used to really stop when I used to see you on that swing. And uh, nothing has changed all these years. So I, I know cancer is a big disease, but on some people it doesn't have any effect. Um, so my question really is, I think, you know, when you were recovering, it, it would have obviously given you, um, it, it takes a lot of strength. Uh, I've seen my mother go through it, so I know what it is to deal with it. Unfortunately, she lost and you won. But what was that one thing that you, when you look back, that you really, that gave you that lot of strength. One, of course, you mentioned your family, mm -hmm. but was there anything else that you really felt, uh, you know, you used to fall back uh, on your inner strength? Absolutely. I feel uh, each one of us uh, who have been impacted with cancer have uh, different journeys. And uh, we really actually, uh, but I think the co at the core is that the willingness to live, to go through the grinding treatment, the painful treatment, and, and actually come out of it as a winner. But many a times, I didn't know that I would survive the treatment. I didn't know that, you know, because it used to be so poisonous and so tough. But luckily for me, I had a huge support system in family, very, very strong family support I had. So uh, that kind of encouraged me. So I would, I would say my, my mom was the biggest uh, support system to me. Lovely. All right, so I've, I think, Preeti, we're kind of out of time for now. So, ladies and gentlemen, firstly, can we have a huge, huge round of applause <laughs> for having such a beautiful presence of Manisha Koirala with us here. And thank you, Preeti.